I um, uh, accumulated a couple car dealerships when I signed my first NASCAR contracts uh, in 1992, 1993. I had a couple car dealerships. So as time went on and I got to know more people, and I mentioned uh, Dave Hebner, uh, I wanted to find somebody in the industry to do my commercials for me. I needed somebody, a, a face, to, to do commercials. So through Dave back in that time, around 98, 99, right in there, um, I went to him and we made a deal with uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, who mm -hmm. was just starting to establish himself as a big time main event star in WWE. If you smell what The Rock is cooking. Uh, made a deal with him, so I gave him a Cadillac to drive, and in exchange for that, he did all my TV commercials. The Rock says head on over to the People's Dealership, Sadler Auto Center, if you smell what The Rock is cooking. He would come in for a show in Greensboro, and we'd catch him, you know, the morning before he went to the building, and he'd come in and we'd shoot, you know, four or five, you know, commercials that day, and, and they were mostly around humor, you know, mm -hmm. they, were, they were funny about, you know, him using his demeanor and personality at the time to encourage people to buy cars. Says that Sadler Auto Center is the best dealership in America. Sadler Auto Center is the people's dealership and that Sadler Auto Center's sales and service is backed up by the most recognizable symbol of greatness on God's green earth, the Brahma Bull. So The Rock says this, if you want a great deal, go to where The Rock gets all his wheels from, Sadler Auto Center. If you smell what The Rock is cooking. So that went on for you know several years, and I uh, about every six eight months I'd you know drive to Davie, Florida, and drop a car off and pick one up and you know bring it back home. So you just give him a new car every six or yeah, eight months. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And he did all the commercials, and you know I mean he was really just starting to take off at the time. And be sure to tell him that the Rock says our prices are rock bottom, and lay the smack down on all the competition. Did you kind of like keep in touch with him after that? Yeah. Um, we kept in touch, and we'd go visit at shows and whatever, and uh, he and Danny uh, came to a couple races. You know, he lived not 30 minutes from the racetrack down mm -hmm. at Homestead Miami Speedway. We kept in touch for a while and and um, got to know each other pretty well. Did you ever do any other types of uh, business ventures with him? Well, we, we tried. Shortly after the race at Homestead, he and I started having some conversations about, you know, him want to to get involved potentially in 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 NASCAR and and like have, as an owner have an, an ownership interest you know in a team and we decided that you know we were going to do it you know jointly as as partners uh, we're on our way to uh, going to Daytona and um, deal fell apart we did agreements contracts and on my end um, right here in Charlotte you know I signed a contract on a multi million dollar building for our team to be in. Uh, bought about nine or ten race cars, hired a bunch of people. Um, I mean, we were. So this is way more than just talking about it. All in. Yeah. I mean, we uh, we yeah. had we had gone. I'd actually gone to the WWE offices and had meetings with some of the people that were involved in their um, sponsorship acquisition department. Basically, one day I got a got a call from uh, a guy named Jerry McDevitt, who oh, yeah. is an attorney. WWE legal. Yeah. Uh, WWE legal, and he basically said. Hey, uh, we're just getting wind of this partnership with you and Dwayne Johnson. Will you send me all of your paperwork that you have? I sent it all up there, and I never heard back directly from from them, other than I got a letter sent to me stating that um, that deal was was not going to take place. They were putting an end to it, and for me not to try and communicate with Dwayne Johnson. This is over. Do not call him anymore about this and just left me holding the bag. It cost me $750,000. Rock ever call you and just kind of give his opinion on it? Or? I saw him one time um, at, a, at the racetrack in Texas. He had come maybe on one of his movie premieres. This is several years later. He was at the racetrack. I wanted you know come in to do an appearance to promote a movie. And all he said to me was, I know you're mad at me. And that was it. I don't want any money. No, I, know. I don't want any of that. But I would have thought sometime along the line, you know, and I'm proud of what he's accomplished. I mean, I, I got to know him pretty well back in those days, and he overcame a lot to make it happen for himself. I mean, worked hard. I considered him to be a genuinely nice guy. Probably still is. 
But at the time, you know, when Vince, when you, when you, when your career and your life is in the hands of a guy named Vince McMahon, he says, "Don't you do that." This is, you know, he didn't have a choice at the time. I understand. I understand he didn't have a choice, but it seems like he would have given you a phone call or that, that's what I'm saying. If something. it wasn't, if it wasn't the next week or the next month, maybe, or when I saw him at the racetrack at Texas, just anything to, you know, I mean, I just wanted him to know what I went. I mean, I went through three years of of hell. And I'd like to know more about his side of it. What what happened? What what did we do wrong? What did you ask? What didn't you ask? And you know, and I guess in a way, right now it, it doesn't matter. But you know, every time I see him, and while I'm, you know, he's probably the biggest box office star going no these days. Yeah. And so, and I know, I know in his heart, I know him well enough to know from back in those days. In his heart, he was terrified at what he was doing to me at that time. I know it. 